morning. You are with the first trade here on CNN IBN. I'm Seher Zama. Let's take you through the top stories this morning. No mercy from the opposition. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh looks for Sonia Gandhi's support today on the Indo-Pak joint statement. Debate on the PM's diplomatic clarification to continue in Parliament. But a voice of support from the US, no credible evidence of India's involvement in Balochistan. That's senior US official Richard Holbrook snubbing Pakistan's claims. In the intense gas supply feud between the Ambani brothers, Anil Ambani's RNRL will approach the Supreme Court today, says he wants an early resolution to the dispute. Google to face stiff competition after Yahoo and Microsoft announce a tie-up for a brand new super search engine. The royal couple of Bollywood Abhi Ash have a close shave with a rampaging elephant while shooting on the sets of Mani Ratnam's Ravana. And in Formula One, Michael Schumacher comes to his team's rescue after Felipe Massa's injury. The seven-time Formula One champ confirms his return to the racing tracks. But first on the show, let's make a start with the big national debate. Has India compromised its position with Pakistan? Prime Minister Manmohan Singh says certainly not, but the opposition is refusing to accept that. Unlike yesterday, we will have help from the UPA chairperson today. Sonia Gandhi is expected to articulate her support to the Prime Minister in the crucial Congress Parliamentary Party meet. And this comes a day after the opposition went all out against him. In the face of an aggressive opposition, the Prime Minister will continue defending the statement and its implications as well as the crucial Baluch factor. And the heated parliamentary debate continued on as CNN IBN as well. External Affairs Minister SM Krishna will be ending the discussion with a statement. And well, you're expecting that heated debate to continue in Parliament today as well. We have with us our correspondent Smitha Nair from outside Parliament. Good morning to you, Smitha. We're expecting that heated debate yet again to continue this morning. But we also know that the CPP meet is on. And we're expecting Sonia Gandhi there to brief party men on supporting Prime Minister in Parliament today. Uh, Seher, yes, the Congress Parliamentary Party meeting, a very crucial one, is underway as we speak at the Central Hall in Parliament. And the reason, Seher, why it's imperative for Sonia Gandhi to come out and express her unqualified support for the Prime Minister on the joint statement between India and Pakistan is precisely why uh, it's reflected in what we heard uh, the BJP uh, Mr. Ravishankar Prasad say when he said uh, that why is it that the Congress party hasn't then come out in support of the Prime Minister and has left it to Prime Minister Singh to defend himself. Remember, uh, since the controversy over that joint statement, we have seen Congress spokespersons really reluctant to come out and express their uh, open support or, or, or welcome welcoming the joint statement really instead saying that the government will be replying to that debate on the floor of the house. We saw that during the nuclear deal uh, issue as well, right. where there seemed to be certain doubting Thomases within the Congress party. Uh, and until uh, such time as Sonia Gandhi came out and expressed her unqualified support, we didn't see them rally around the Prime Minister. Therefore, it's crucial for Mrs. Gandhi uh, to, uh, to really come out today and express that uh, wholehearted support or unqualified support of the Prime Minister for the Congress really to rally around their Prime Minister today. Okay, we are expecting those uh, more stronger voices of support from within the party for the Prime Minister, but Mohan Singh in Parliament today. Today. But what are the surprise support are we expecting today? We know that uh, the JDU and the SP were slamming uh, the Indo-Pak joint statement in Parliament on Wednesday. And uh, a CPI uh, member D. Raja did speak out in support of favouring a dialogue with Pakistan. What are the voices of support from outside uh, the Congress are we expecting this morning? Uh, Seher, uh, the voice of support from the CPI is Mr. D. Raja, not surprising. The party was saying uh, that, uh, the, that, that the government really uh, should make sure that Pakistan uh, uh, remains committed to its commitment to stop cross-border terrorism. Uh, the party accepts that uh, there has to be dialogue with Pakistan, uh, but it is not the view of the left, can I tell you. The CPM certainly off the view uh, that what the government has done in that joint statement is compromise its position, especially on the issue of the inclusion of Baluchistan. Even yesterday, Seher, uh, the opposition remained unconvinced on the Prime Minister's explanation or clarification, if I may, on the inclusion of uh, the word Baluchistan in that joint statement, right. uh, going so far as to say that the Prime Minister cannot say that we don't 
don't have a problem with the issue. Therefore, the B word found its way into the joint statement. So expect more opposition mm -hmm. asking the government uh, to really clarify its position, possible interventions from the Prime Minister. And we are hearing that at oh, yes. between 3 and 3.30 this afternoon, we will be hearing from the External okay. Affairs Minister, Mr. S.M. Krishna, in the conclusion of that debate on the Indo-Pak statement and the other foreign policy initiatives of the UPA government. Okay, Smitha and I are from outside Parliament there. Many thanks for those inputs and also letting us know in what to expect that heated debate to continue in Parliament today on the Indo-Pak joint statement. Meanwhile, Pakistan Prime Minister Yusuf Raza Gilani has reciprocated the sentiments for peace that have been expressed by his Indian counterpart, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. He said that the dialogue is the only way forward for the two countries. I quote, we had useful talks and a good meeting of minds. We had agreed that terrorism was a common threat. We also agreed that dialogue is the only way forward, unquote. So you are with the first trade. Let's also take a look at how the markets have opened this morning. They've had a weak start, but let's take a look at the current figures of the Sunsex. There it is in the red, down by 0.22%, currently trading at 15,139 points. A look at the figures of the Nifty as well in the, in the red. 4,496 is where it is at the moment. And the mid caps, they're trading at 5,855 points at the moment. And to news now from the world of entertainment, the royal couple of Bollywood, Abhishek Bachchan and Aishwarya, ha Aishwarya Rai, have had a close shave while shooting for Mani Ratnam's Ravana after an elephant ran amok on the sets in a jungle in Kerala on the sets of the upcoming film Ravana. The stars, Mani Ratnam himself and the rest of the film crew were trapped inside the forest for a long time. The tusker killed its 50-year-old Mahut by piercing his left tusk into him. The film crew, however, were not injured. The crew, including the stars, were moved to the nearby area by the forest officials. And still ahead on the show, we'll get you the latest figures and update on the swine flu. New cases reported in Pune. And in sports, badminton star Saina Nehwal is down with chicken pox. Would she have to miss the world championships? Stay with us to know more on that. The Congress supports the Prime Minister on the Indo-Pakistan joint statement but says dialogue only after Pakistan acts on terror. Sonia backs Manmohan but is silent on Balochistan. But there's a voice of support from the US. No credible evidence of India's involvement in Balochistan. Special envoy for the Afghan region, Richard Holbrook, snubs Pakistan's claims. And well, that debate on the Indo-Pak joint statement is expected to rock Parliament today as well for another day. You're with Good Afternoon India here on CNN IBN. I'm Seher Sama. And I'm uh, Karma Paljo. The other top story we are following here on the show. Crime in the capital, four arrested in the kidnap and murder of a Delhi schoolboy. One of them is his friend. Anil Ambani's attempts to get a speedy trial in the gas dispute with brother Mukesh hits a roadblock. The Supreme Court turns down his plea for a final hearing on the 1st of September. But uh, no roadblocks for the Commonwealth Games. Supreme Court gives the green signal for the Games Village in Delhi, turning down objections from environmentalists that the project is on the Yamuna riverbed. Ten students of the Banaras Hindu University have been detained by police for ragging their juniors. They're suspended and fined 50,000 rupees each by the college authorities. And Bollywood's uh, royal couple Abhishek and Ashwara have a close shave with a rampaging elephant on the sets of Mani Ratnam's Ravana. And here's a first look at Dutesh Deshmukh as Aladdin in his upcoming film with Amitabh Bachchan and Sanjay Dutt. All that and more, but uh, first we start with our top story this hour. Four people have been arrested for kidnap and murder of a 16-year-old schoolboy, Ribu Chawla. In fact, all those arrested are in their 20s, have been identified as Rocky, Rishi, Gaurav and Mani. The police say that one of them, Rocky, was known 
to Ribhu. A car and a mobile phone have also been recovered. Ribhu's body was found in Vasant Kunj on Wednesday. He has been, he had, was in fact strangled to death. He was kidnapped on Tuesday from KR Mangalam School in Vikaspuri. The kidnappers had made a ransom demand for 40 lakh rupees, of which Ribhu's parents had already paid up half the amount up front. And we have with us uh, Shambhavi Rai from New Delhi over the phone line to give us more details on this case. Uh, Shambhavi, on what charges has the police arrested the four? Sir, what we know as of now is that the four accused, Rocky, Rishi, Mani and Gaurav, are still being questioned in the case. Uh, Delhi police had in fact made special teams yesterday and had conducted several raids at different locations on the basis of version given by Ribu's friend who was present with him on the scooty which, uh, and was on the back seat in fact when the incident of kidnapping had happened. Now, on the basis of those raids, police actually was able to track down Rocky yesterday night. Rocky was closely known to Ribu and was present in the wagon hour which had stopped Ribu's scooty on the way and uh, uh, Ribu uh, actually had a brief conversation with him after which Rocky with the help of uh, three other associates Rishi, Mani and Gaurav had pulled Ribu inside the wagon R. Now the police officials are saying that all the four boys are in their mid-twenties and they were very well aware of Ribu's background that he belongs to a well-to-do family and the boys can uh, make easy money after kidnapping Ribu and uh, uh, but later after they had received uh, the ransom amount of 20 lakh rupees, uh, pressure was building on them actually to release, release Ribu and uh, uh, that's when they hastily killed him for the fear of being identified uh, as they were scared that uh, Ribu might reveal their identity after his release and police may arrest them for kidnapping. And uh, Shambhavi, this is the version of course uh, being given to you by the police uh, right now. What do you know of the ransom amount? 20 lakhs we are told have already been paid uh, by the parents. Yes, Karma. Uh, actually, initially, the kidnappers had asked for a whopping amount of 60 lakh rupees, but after negotiations, they had come down to 40 lakhs, out of which 20 lakhs was already paid to the kidnappers. Karma. Sham Shambhavira, indeed, a tragic case there, but many thanks for all those details on that story. We'll be following it very, very closely to the other big story on Good Afternoon India, the politics of the two-week-old Indo-Pakistan joint statement that was given out by the Prime Minister in Egypt. Now, he will defend the statement in Parliament again today after the opposition strongly criticised him yesterday. Well, but the opposition from the Prime Minister is also from within the Congress party. The party is still not fully convinced with the joint statement there. And all this despite Sonia Gandhi calling an urgent meeting of all MPs earlier this morning. And this is what Sonia Gandhi, uh, this is what has in fact happened in that meeting. Sonia Gandhi has backed the Prime Minister and his defence of the joint statement, saying that resumption of talks with Pakistan is essential. She said that talks will only happen if Pakistan acts on terror. She also denied any rift within the party. But sources telling us that some Congress leaders are still unhappy with the Prime Minister. Sonia Gandhi was speaking at the Congress Parliamentary Party meet this morning. Her support to the joint statement comes a day after the opposition went all out against Dr. Manmohan Singh's justification of that joint statement in Sharm el Sheikh in Parliament on Wednesday. He will continue his defence in Parliament today as well. And speaking in the Rajya Sabha this morning, External Affairs Minister S.M. Krishna has said that India's attempts to get Pakistan sign the extradition treaty have been futile so far. We have been impressing upon Pakistan that it is in the interest of both of the countries that we enter into an agreement, a treaty of extradition. But unfortunately, in spite of our uh, repeated attempts, we have not succeeded. Uh, yes, uh, Pallavi, talking about that Baluchistan issue, there's a clear voice of support, though, that's coming from outside from the United States on that uh, issue. In fact, U.S. envoy to Afpak region Richard Holbrook has said that Pakistan has given no proof of India's involvement in the Baluchistan conflict. Let's just take in a listen into his comment. Have they given you any credible evidence of India's involvement in Baluchistan? Mm -hmm. I would be misleading if I said it didn't come up, but the narrow answer to your question is no. 
Okay, but is in a manner the Prime Minister also uh, sending out a conflicting statement on one front saying that talks are important, it is essential to carry on with talks, of course, uh, the second option of war is certainly not viable, but also at the same time saying talks will happen only if Pakistan promises to act on terror. So is that in a sense uh, giving an image of the Prime Minister being confused and not being able to convince uh, not just people from within his party but also the opposition in Parliament? I, I think the Prime Minister does have some kind of a framework in his mind, uh, but I am afraid he's not able to convey it, uh, you know, in the manner it should be conveyed to the rest of the people. Uh, you are right that he doesn't sound very convincing on that. Uh, and really, what are the India's options? If you say that we have no option but a dialogue, then why did we break off from the dialogue after 26-11? We should have pressed our case at a dialogue table even then. Uh, now, the other question is that if you have now, uh, you know, not bracketed a dialogue and uh, terrorism uh, in the same thing, in the same sentence, uh, then what would you do, uh, what would be your steps in case another uh, spectacular terrorist incident takes place in India? Would you again go back to the uh, situation uh, as it was after 26-11? Right. And then why will anybody take you seriously? What is your credibility? Because after every six months, one year or two years, you start going back to the dialogue table. Why will anybody take you seriously that there will be an intolerable strain on the dialogue process if another Mumbai takes place? Why will anybody take you seriously? I, I'm afraid the Prime Minister has not uh, answered that question as well. Okay, indeed. Uh, many thanks for sharing your uh, opinion and perspective on that. Uh, Sushant Sareen, uh, strategic analyst, affairs analyst, thank you for sharing your views with us. Now, talking about Baluchistan, Prime Minister's clarification on Baluchistan have apparently not cut much ice 